Greetings, welcome to my domain. I'm the Game Dog Michael. Welcome back to CSI Deadly Intent. Time for case three. The last gasp. Gasp. Now. Is it going to open? It should. Load up, please, properly. I'm gonna put the remote control just in case I need to. There it is. Just in case I need to turn the TV for myself. Damn. Bear it back. I missed something. What happened? There we go. Hmm. And then. Clarinda John uh, Jackson. I used to watch rumors all the time. Yes, apparently that was a very popular television program. Brass told me she's now hosting a live version in the showroom at the Silver Skies. From what I've seen so far, particularly the fact that the victim is wearing her bathing suit, it just doesn't feel as though we're looking at a suicide. Could very well be an accident, but... But I'm getting ahead of the evidence again, aren't I? We should get to work. Let's start processing. This is the case I found in the demo. I'm going to be very thorough here. No ashes or soot. It doesn't look like this has ever been used. Well, good. Good, 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 good. I'm gonna go this way. Anything over here? Nope. Anything over here by your feet? Hello. I don't care. Anything over there? Oh, there's the body! So much for a therapeutic soak. Oh my. Oh, hello. That ring has a tribal pattern. They're popular for tattoos. No kidding. Thank you, Morpheus. I needed to know that. This is interesting. I haven't seen any plants around here with foliage like this. It looks familiar. Ah. Uh. Ooh. It's a broken derangé bottle. Derangé. A colleague of mine used to live on this stuff. It's citrus soda with a French flair, he said. I never tried it, but he swore by it. Something else. Hmm. Seems too easy to be a drowning. But now I suspect there's more to be found at the scene of the crime. Well, good thing we're here already. Come over every little detail. Hmm. 
Anything? Nothing? Hmm. It's in the water, so it's not going to get much from it. from this either. Might get, uh, something. Ah! Fingerprint! Or liquid. <laughs> Smells like alcohol. Yeah. I see nothing in the way of... Oh, that was it. Hmm. I know I'm missing something down here in this uh, ground. I wouldn't mind knowing how that ring fits into all of this. All right, I guess nothing else, uh, nothing else left to do, except head to the lab. There's no fingerprints. Let's uh, get a good look at that uh, ring. I don't care. I can see tiny imperfections along the edges of all the decoration on this ring. Perhaps it was handmade. Let's uh, get a closer look. I can see tiny imperfections along the edges of all the decoration on this ring. Perhaps it was handmade. I can see tiny imperfections. Yes, okay. Is that for the ring? No, there's still something else left on it. What now? Processing. Still something left on it. Some chemical. Oh my god, go away. Search! Nope. Nope. Yep. Yep. Bingo. Carbonated water, high fructose corn syrup, citric acid, sodium benzoate, food starch, caffeine, glycerol ester, ascorbic acid, yellow 6, red 40, ethanol, and flunitrazepam. Orange soda, vodka, and a roofie. Flunitrazepam has been illegal in the U.S. for years. Its association with date rape is by no means accidental. I would be surprised if Miss Jackson knew it was there. Anything else? Got nothing to get DNA off of. It's 
literally nothing there. Locations, please. I'll be ready to go in just a moment. You might want to take a look at this before we leave. I've identified the leaf fragment from the crime scene. It's actually an entire young plant. Kalankohi degramontiana. Also known as Devil's Backbone, or my personal favorite, Mother of Thousands. It's a species native to Madagascar, fairly prolific. They're able to reproduce asexually by forming young plants like the one we found along the edges of their leaves. Ah! No problem. I'll have David come by for pickup as soon as possible. Yeah, okay. He already did that. The spec of the scene. Could be something we're missing. Oh! That's new. I'm missing something on the, uh, in here. Otherwise, it wouldn't let me do it, do anything with it. It's gonna be this one small detail. I know it. For now, let's uh, leave whatever his name is. Room. He's the witness. Are you Steve Tamson? Yes, I am. What is this uh, in regards to? We're from the Las Vegas Crime Lab. We're investigating the death of uh, Clarinda Jackson. I understand. I, I heard there was an accident in the in the spa. We're still investigating the circumstances of Ms. Jackson's death. We'll find out if it was an accident soon enough. How well do you know Ms. Jackson? Clarinda? I, well, we've been going through this rehab thing together, you know? We're... We were friends, and sorry for the shakes. It's just hard thinking she's dead. Was Clarinda depressed? Had she mentioned suicide? No way. I mean, she wasn't thrilled with her marriage, but she was here to turn things around. She was on her way up, not down. Do you recognize this ring? Hey, that's tight. No, I've, I've, I've never seen it before. I'm sorry. Just let us know. Let us know if you think yeah. of anything. Okay, I will. Hey, the victim's husband just showed up. I'm done taking a statement, but I'm sure you'll have some questions of your own. Thanks, Jim. Uh... Crime scene? arrange for Ms. Jackson's body to be taken to the morgue. I'll call Dr. Robbins. I already told him about it. That plant wasn't there before, was it? Uh, gym brass or interrogation room? I'm gonna try interrogation room. If there's nothing there, it's probably in brass's office. Okay, there's a trans scene transition, so that means we're going the right place. No, we're not. Got me in brass's office then. Yeah. Anything interesting Thankfully, going on? No. What do you need? Oh, that's it. Process of scene. There's something else missing here. Mm. 
What do you got, Doc? Let's go talk to the Doc. What do you got? A flights of angels sing thee to thy rest, Clarinda Jackson. And there's one more for the scrapbook. I'm sorry, you have a scrapbook? Of all your autopsies? No, just the celebrity ones. Down that, Doc? The warm spa water may have complicated lividity, but between that and vitreous potassium levels, I'd estimate her time of death to be somewhere between 10 and 11 p.m. Cause of death? Did you find water in her lungs? Yeah, the chlorinated spa water saturated her lungs, suggesting her cause of death to be asphyxiation due to drowning. However, I also found post-mortem bruising along her shoulders. Take a look. I'd say they appear to be handprints. My professional opinion, someone held Ms. Jackson under the water until she drowned. I know who did it. Did you take the victim's fingerprints and DNA? Would I leave you with nothing fun to do? Please, enjoy. Thank you, sir. Have you got results back from talks? I haven't had a chance yet to send the samples over, but I did run a prelim tox. Victim's blood alcohol level was 0.08, and there are traces of flunitrazepam metabolite. Anything else, There is, actually. I recovered some semen from Ms. Jackson's vaginal vault. The sex appears to have been consensual. I collected a sample for you. Thank you, Doc. Back to the lab, I guess. Uh, medical database. Anything? I don't care. Nothing. Fingerprints? I got nothing to get fingerprints off of. <clears throat> oh, wait a minute. I got her fingerprints, but that does nothing for me. Wrong one. I need evidence. Ah! That's what that is. I got mail, apparently. Okay, I know where to find the bottle cap. But first, let's, uh... Look DNA-wise. Look for a match. Hello. I don't care. Nope. No match there. Might be something here, though. Blue, green, blue. Not quite. That's red, blue, red. Not that one either. Ah. Blue, yellow, red. Green. Green, yellow. 
Blue, red, blue. Not looking good for whoever this uh, DNA belongs to. How are we looking on our celebrity murder? I'd love to have something to tell under Sheriff Eckley. There has been a bit of a development. Miss Jackson had sex with someone other than her husband the night of the murder. Tox screen showed signs of flunitrazepam in her system, so it may not have been consensual. With whom? Do we know? Another patient at the rehab clinic, a Mr. Stephen Tamson. Codis hit? He gave his DNA voluntarily. His cousin was reported missing three years ago, and Stephen was next of kin. It turned out to be a false alarm, but the information is still in the system. No good deed goes unpunished, I guess. Nope. See if Brass can bring him in on suspicion of rape. All right. There's also some physical evidence, a ring, but we're still looking at where that fits. Finding the person it fits might be a good start. Hmm. Hey. Well, Jim, we'd like to bring Steve Thompson in suspicion of rape. Show me what you've got. Uh, his DNA. Even if she hadn't been murdered, date rape is still rape. Okay. Where are you at? Not only did you have intercourse with the victim, but she had roofies in her system when she was murdered. Wait, murder? Roofies? What the hell? I don't know anything about that. You don't deny that you had intercourse with her? Not when you ask like that. Look, yeah, we had sex pretty much every day this week, but she was a married woman. It's not the kind of thing you just blurt out. Can you prove it? Yeah, I keep detailed records every time I get laid. How the hell would... Wait, yeah, maybe. We both got STD tests on the same day. I can give you my medical record number, or whatever. You guys can look stuff like that up, right? I don't know what Clorinda's was. <laughs> Dr. Robbins, our coroner, can provide Clorinda's medical records to us. Write your number down and we'll look it up on the medical database. No problem. Thank you, sir. Is this your ring? I wish. Would you try it on for us? On your left ring finger, please. Like a wedding ring, huh? Sure, I'll try it on. It's a little big for me. I've always had skinny fingers. Look, it's a nice ring, but it ain't mine. All right. Thank you, sir. It's all for now. I'm gonna head back to the crime scene and see if there's something I missed. Actually, I had... Head to the crime scene first to see if I can find that bottle cap, because that's prob probably gone missing. Or it's probably randomly in the grass. Or right there. This is a Deranger cap. Oh, finally, it's done. Evidence. Let's see what we got. What's on it? Please be a fingerprint. Please be a finger. Fingerprint. Very good. I'm actually a little surprised this print survived the humidity near the hot tub. Good. Now let's search what's his name's room. Wrong way. Let's search his room. Because I got a funny feeling. I got a suspicion here. A slight, very slight suspicion, but it's a suspicion nonetheless. Okay. <clears throat> What now? If you wouldn't mind, I have some questions for the victim's husband. Then where's the victim's husband? In the morgue? Why am I looking at her feet? 
Take a look at the left handprint, the deeper bruising around what would be the base of the ring finger. Our killer may have been wearing a wedding ring. I want to get a shot of that. Did Clinton's medical records mention anything about that one? She was tested for a wide range of STDs last week. She went the whole nine yards. HIV, gonorrhea, chlamydia, HPV, even syphilis. The results were all negative. Excellent. Then where's the missy's husband? <clears throat> Check the medical records. Medical database. Evidence. Search. Stephen did get tested for sexually transmitted diseases, just as he said. That's quite a laundry list of tests. He wasn't taking any chances. It appears Stephen was telling the truth. I find it unlikely that they would both have such comprehensive screening done at the same place and time, coincidentally. Fingerprints. I got the funny feeling. These are not hers. Because it doesn't belong to either one of them. Boy, it's quite a reach for this one. None of one of these. Another one of those. Strange. It's neither one of those. Which is even stranger. Oh, I got an idea. I need to get a look at that. I'll check the mail after. Microscope. 
evidence. Picture. Nothing interesting there. Oh. Well, what now? When the murder was committed, Clorinda's killer was wearing the ring we found. Well, that ring is not processed yet. There's something else here then, there must be. <clears throat> I get anything else? Is he in Brass's office? If you wouldn't mind, I have some questions for the victim's husband. Then where's the victim's husband? Interrogation? I try not to limit myself. Your story checks out, Steve. But we'd like to ask you some more questions. Hey, sure. Somebody murdered my girlfriend. I want to help. Did she mention anything about going to the spa? I don't remember her saying anything, but she used the spa quite a bit. Were you in the spa area when this happened? No, I was in my room, chilling out. Clorinda and I had just, you know, I was resting. Hmm. Huh. Did Clorinda have any enemies? Like somebody that would kill her? No, she never mentioned anything like that. She did gripe about this guy from work, though. Jack Shell, I think his name was. I don't know all the details, but I guess he and Clorinda had this rivalry going. And her marriage was pretty messed up, obviously. Location added, huh? Did Clorinda's husband know about the affair? Probably. She left him a message last night. Oh, God, you don't think... That crazy bastard. Mr. Tamsin, I understand your feelings, but take it from me. It does not pay to get ahead of the evidence. We'll find Clorinda's killer. Rest assured. Can you think of anything that might help us find Clorinda's killer? I don't know what else to say. I don't think I really had a chance to know mm. everything about her life yet. I believe you're free to go. Hey, thanks. If you need me, I'll be back at the rehab center. If I ever needed to be surrounded by shrinks, it's now. All right. I already compared them. Dressing room. Hey, I got Ernie Goldwasser down here. He wants to know the results of his wife's autopsy. I can stall him for a while, but if you want to be the one who tells him his wife was murdered, then you need to get over to my office right away. Oh, finally. I get to talk to him. Where is he? What do you need? We got him down in interrogation. He walked off with his wife's purse, so we're holding him for interfering with a crime scene. That sounds like an honest mistake from a grieving husband to me. Me too. Honestly. But it is what it is. Let's go talk to him. Okay, what do you got? Look, you want to tell me why Captain Brass is accusing me of removing evidence from a crime scene when all I did was take my wife's personal belongings from Twilight Palms and bring them back home with me? 
Mr. Goldwasser, your wife's been the victim of a homicide. Homicide? Do you know who killed her? Have you seen this ring? I don't before? think so. No. I don't recognize that ring. You hesitated a moment. I thought for a moment that it looked familiar, but I I, I don't know why. Maybe I've seen it before. I, I I honestly don't know. Would you mind trying the ring on your left ring finger? I'd rather not remove my own wedding ring if at all possible. Please. Mr. Goldwasser, it will only take a moment, and it will help our investigation. All right, all right. Give it here. Yeah, it's a bit small. Can't get it over my knuckle. Sorry. That's definitely not my ring. I don't have anything that proves otherwise. Do you, man, do you know a man named Steve Tom? No. Is that the man who killed my wife? Mr. No. Goldwasser, I need to ask you to calm down. I know how difficult this must be for you, but we're doing the best we can to conduct a full and thorough investigation of your wife's death. I have no idea who you're talking about. None whatsoever, but if he had something to do with her death, I swear to God. Look, please take my wife's personal items. You'll need them. They're evidence, right? Take whatever you need. Do whatever you have to do. Yes, sir. You'll be arrested before we know it. Either you will or that what's his name will be. Let's see what we got. Phone. In the last few days before Ms. Jackson's death, Mr. Goldwasser called her cell phone several times. Well, no surprise there. His last call was made at 10 p.m. on the day of the murder, which is around the approximate time of death. Anything else in here I can uh, pick around? Nope. Nope, okay. There's a fingerprint found at the scene, but we don't have any... We need a warrant for him. Alright, let's see what we got. What I got that needs pro- Oh yeah, phone. That's what I got. It needs processing. Audio. I don't care. Wait a moment. There's some kind of trace evidence on that phone. Ah! This phone is conspicuously free of fingerprints. I wonder if that thread came from something used to wipe it down. I don't know, but the phone is still not done yet. Cheating bitch! I'll kill you and the little coward you're screwing! That call was made at 10 p.m. But the last call on the phone was to check voicemail at 10.15. I know I've heard that bell somewhere before. I know I've heard that bell somewhere before. Hmm. Hang on. Oh, I need to process that uh, that bit of fiber. You got anything here? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Nothing there. 
There it is. Nothing. Nothing interesting there. Hang on. Nothing there. Nothing. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm dealing with it. Oh. Oh. What do you got? Okay. Gotcha. Were you aware of your wife's affair? Fair. How dare you say that to me? We know it isn't an easy thing to discuss, Mr. Goldwasser, but please, tell us what you know. Oh, God, this is all such a shock to me. I had no idea she was seeing anyone else. You lying sack of shit. Cheating bitch. I'll kill you and the little coward you're screwing. I... Uh, I see. I... Uh, yeah, that sounded really bad, even to me. But you have to understand, she, she just left me a message telling me that she was sleeping with someone. I would never have actually done anything. So when they found her dead in the hot tub a couple of hours later, that was just a big coincidence? Yes, damn it! Where were you between 10 and 11 p.m.? I was at home. I got home from work at about 9.45 and I heard Clorinda's message. I had to calm down a little bit before I called her, so... You left that message after calming down. Yeah, I thought I had myself under control, but I heard her voice on the voicemail and I flipped out all over again. That was right at 10. I remember because the whole time I was talking, the stupid bell from the church up the hill was ringing. Now I know why that bell sounded so familiar. I remember that church. But when I first came out here to teach my seminar, a colleague from the university was showing me around. He's a history professor and he told me that the church was built in the middle of nowhere specifically to allow for the ringing of that bell at all hours. I can definitely confirm that it's more than an hour away from the Twilight Palms Rehabilitation Center. So he makes a death threat and it turns out to be his alibi? <laughs> I've been complaining about those bells since we moved in. Never again. Any idea why Clonus phone was wiped down? I have no idea. I didn't touch anything in her purse. Looks like you're off the hook for now, but we're hoping you might stay and answer a few more questions. Like I told you before we got sidetracked, I will do anything I can to help you find whoever killed my wife. Thank you, sir. Drugs? What are you talking about? Someone put flunitrazepam in her drink. A roofie. Roofie? Somebody spiked her drink? Yeah. I can think of one son of a bitch who might have wanted her dead. Jack Shell. Jack Shell? The Stars and Bars guy? Doesn't he have a show at the Silver Skies too? Mm. Sure does, the no talent bastard. Not only that, but we recently found out that the casino was going to cut one of its shows, either Jack's or Clorinda's. I can send you a copy of the email from my phone. Oh, you can bet that Jack wanted to keep his job, so he made damn sure Clorinda wouldn't show up to work today. Excellent. And now we're back here. Hello. We're from the Las Vegas Crime Lab. Are you Jack Shell? Why, by my stars and bars, indeed I am. What can I do for you? I'm always willing and able to assist our men and women in law enforcement. We're investigating the death of Clorinda Jackson. We understand you both had shows at the Silver Skies Casino. Hold on. Did you just say that Clorinda died? She's dead? 
Oh, my dear Lord, how on earth... What happened? We're not quite sure yet. But you folks wouldn't be here talking to me if you didn't think she'd been murdered. This is just the most awful thing I've ever heard in my whole life. Clarinda, she was a dear, dear sweet friend and just a magnificent talent. We shall not see another like her again in this business, I'll tell you that. She will be profoundly missed. Hmm. Have you seen this ring before? I could not honestly tell you whether or not I have seen that or any other particular piece of jewelry before. It's just not the sort of thing I concern myself with when it comes to making a person's acquaintance. How is your relationship with Miss Jackson? You considered Miss Jackson a close personal friend, but might there have been a certain amount of professional rivalry? Uh, no. Well, if anything, I'd call it sibling rivalry, pure and simple. We both grown up together in show business. <laughs> Had our share of ups and downs, let me tell you what. And then, by chance, we found ourselves here in Sin City, both with shows at the Silver Skies. Her show'd come in right after mine in the, you know, main showroom. You see, I play the lounge. But anyway, we still share some crew and some staff, and even some audience, I'd say. There was a certain amount of competitiveness, sure, but why would you ask a leading question like that? Did someone say something? Mr. Shell. Now, please, call me Jack. My friends all call me Jack. Do they now, call you Blowhard, did too? I had it out for Clorinda or something, because that most assuredly was not the case. And I definitely have to say that person is lying to you. Uh, where were you between 10 and 11 p.m.? Mr. Shell. Jack. Jack, I'm afraid we're going to need you to establish your alibi during the time Clorinda was murdered. And to tell you the truth, I'm not really sure how I'd be able to verify this for you, but I'd be willing to swear on a stack of Bibles that I was at my home last night by myself, fast asleep. Do you often go to bed so early? I tell you, I learned the very hardest way that you will not enjoy longevity in this business if you insist on burning your candle at both ends. So, <laughs> I just tossed that some bitch candle as far away from me as I could. I cannot tell you the number of lives that could be saved each year if they just heed my living example. I'm sure that's true, Jack. Look, uh, be straight with me. You don't honestly believe that I had something to do with killing Clarinda, now do you? Do you ever see Clorinda have words with anyone? A disgruntled employee, perhaps, maybe a problem with men. Suddenly, you're struggling in that word. Now, I, look, you can't have me speaking out of school now, can you? I mean, it don't feel right to talk about rumors and innuendos and such. But, well, I don't think it was really very much of a secret that she and Ernest, that's her husband, they weren't getting along too well. And, you know, surprise, surprise, I mean, Clorinda's the fourth Mrs. Ernest Goldwasser, so I'm pretty sure Ernie's not too good at communicating with the wife. Yeah, uh, we know your show is in trouble. We have an internal email from the casino stating that either your show or Clorinda Jackson's would be canceled. Were you aware of it? Sadly, I was all too aware of it, yes. But it ain't called show friends, now is it? This is a business, and apparently, according to the accountants here, the entertainment wing of the operation wasn't flapping too strong. Of course, I disagreed with their evaluation. I see myself affecting people in ways that cannot be measured in cold, hard cash. But in the end, wasn't my call to make. Jack, you ever pay Clorinda a visit after hours? Perhaps between 10 and 11 p.m. last night? Now, it's my nature to offer myself completely to those who protect and serve our community, but I truly cannot accept the tone of your question. There is an insinuation in it that I simply will not tolerate. Now, if you please, my dressing room is my very special place. It's sacred to me. Now, I take to the stage momentarily, and I need to focus myself sharply, so if you please, we must continue this discussion at some further point. I wish you a very pleasant day. Well, that went well. This Jack Shell strikes me as someone who may be guilty. We should speak with him. I 
believe I made it abundantly clear that I no longer wish to be disturbed by your baseless and spurious allegations. Now, once again, I have a show to perform, and you two are interfering with my composure. Please, be on your way. Okay. Ah, his fingerprint. <laughs> you thinking what I'm thinking? The prints are in plain view. Don't need a warrant. Yep, I know. I'm gonna get away. Come on, mouse or arrow. Don't travel upwards on me. I get the funny feeling I know who put the ruby in her drink. Let's see if I can get a match here. We have a match to Jack Shell. I think his great American routine is about to wear thin. Yay! Set of brass. Hey. Uh, we need a search warrant for Jack Shelling, Jack Shell's dressing room. I'm gonna need to see some evidence before I go to a judge. Uh, print found on a broken on a cap of broken bottle. That's my evidence. We put that print at the crime scene together with the casino's internal memo, and I have a pretty good feeling we're going to get a judge's signature on that search warrant. Jack, we have a search warrant to examine your dressing room. How dare you, sir? Have you all lost your damn minds? Jack, simmer down, okay? We have your fingerprint on a bottle of Duranger which was left behind at the scene of Miss Jackson's murder. There have got to be at least 20 bottles of that stuff in the break room fridge. I must have touched that one before Clarinda took it. That's all that is. It means nothing. Nevertheless, we have a warrant, so please, let us in. I have never been so humiliated in all my life. What did you leave me out here for? She he shares. He's got a lot of green shirts. Is that spinach or mold? I hope it's spinach. Now I'm look around. Ah, the mother of thousands. If the young plant we found at the crime scene was spawned from this one, it would have been recently. We should be able to match them up at the lab. Come here, plant. We need to be able to match the missing sprout to the empty spot from which it originated. Hmm. Seems Ms. Jackson didn't so much turn over a new leaf as have it raked. Hmm. Oh, hello. Oh, nothing. Hmm. Let's see what we got here. Missing something here. The location isn't done yet. It's still something here. 
I do not have anything to say to you. <laughs> hmm. Nothing? Well, let's head there now. Head back to the lab. Get those plants, uh... I understand. I would want the same thing in your shoes. It's really day shift's case, but... I'll see if I can get someone. How about those two? They seem to have enough time to stand around and watch us talk. Maybe we can put them to work. Actually, ma'am, we... Lieutenant Briggs. At least until I get this case wrapped up. Then I can get on with my retirement. I'll leave you to it. Good luck. I may need it. Now here's the situation. Some maniac dropped a bowling ball out of a second story window and killed the kid tagging the building below. Day shift got a piece of skin from the thumb hole on the ball, but they weren't able to work up a sample from it. Now I don't need DNA to tell me who did this, but the courts do. So I need you to isolate the sample for me. Lieutenant. We'll certainly do our best. And so we reunite the mother of thousands with one of her children. Which isn't good news for Mr. Shell. There we go. We got a warrant from Brass. Okay, not that one. Hmm. Here we go. Good Lord. Just checking. Uh, yellow, red.
Green, blue, yellow. Not that one. Blue, yellow, red. Yellow. This is blue, yellow, red, yellow. This is blue, yellow, red, blue. Nope. Let's try this one. Green, green, red, yellow. Red, red, yellow, green. Let's get red, yellow, green, red. Yeah, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna fly. This is blue, blue, green, red. Yellow, green, red. Yellow, green, red. Yellow, green, red, blue. Yellow, green. Uh, red, blue. Red, blue, yellow, green. This one. Blue, blue, green. This one. Blue, blue, red. This one. Green, uh, green, red, red. Blue, blue, yellow, red, yellow. Green, green. This one, and finish off this one. Confirm match. Excellent job. Let's hope this brings Lieutenant Briggs one step closer to retirement. Yay! Anything else to search in evidence? Document analysis. And nothing. Uh oh. Oh, it's fixed now. <laughs> Briggs, see, uh, not Briggs, uh, Brass. Yeah. We need a arrest warrant for Jack Shell. Have enough evidence? God, I hope so. Plant found at scene of the crime. Missing its piece. In room. It's a stretch, but okay, uh, you got the warrant. Apparently, it was a good stretch. We stretched far enough. Oh, what the hell do you want now? The plant fragment of the crime scene... The... Jack, we found traces of the plant from your dressing room at the crime scene. We know you were there. That's quite an extraordinary claim, considering it isn't the least bit true. I don't even know where Clarinda lives. Did you know Clarinda was in rehab? Oh, poor dear. 
I wasn't aware she had a problem, no. You lying sack of shit. You had a confidential memo that specifically mentions Clorinda's alcohol problem. You lied to us, Jack. You gave Clorinda that bottle because you needed her out of the way. Well, you just know it all, don't you? I suppose there's no point in continuing this ruse. Yes, I knew about Clarinda's proclivities, and yes, I did pay her a social call last night. I just wanted to give her enough rope to... Let me choose my words carefully here. I just wanted to provide her with the opportunity to drink her way right out of rehabilitation, thus ensuring my continued employment. But you listen to me. I couldn't possibly kill a woman. So, you draw the line at getting an alcoholic drunk and ruining her career. Your point is well taken, sir. It was not what I would call my shining moment, but believe it or not, I do have the self-awareness to realize that if I lose my little second-rate show at that little second-rate casino, my career is over. I would never even consider killing somebody, but there can come a point when your future is on the line that you stop worrying about what will keep you proud and focus on what's gonna keep you fed. Is this your ring? Heavens no. Would you mind trying it on? I don't care much about jewelry, but if it will aid in your investigation, I will acquiesce. I can't speak to its craftsmanship or tastefulness, but the ring fits, I assure you, coincidentally well. Nevertheless, it is most assuredly not my ring. I got nothing and it'll prove it. Why didn't you wipe off the bottle? I must admit I would not be in the deplorable situation in which I currently find myself had I, as you say, taken the time to wipe that bottle down. But the truth is, I didn't have the time. Right as I was about to leave Clorinda to her hot tub and the booze fest that I could only guess was about to ensue, some fool walked in on us. There was someone else yes, there? Yes, a champion dullard casually strolled in only to sneeze all over my lucky sweater. Well, I had to take it off as soon as I returned to my dressing room. Couldn't put it anywhere but back at the end of the rack because goodness knows when the dry cleaning... Jack. Stay focused. Did this gentleman sneeze on you before or after you slipped Clorinda the Mickey? Slip her a Mickey? What on earth are you? Oh, dear. I just realized something. There is something I haven't told you. Getting her drunk wasn't my idea. It was Ernest Goldwasser's. I'm having trouble understanding what Mr. Goldwasser would stand to gain from getting his wife fired. I asked that sneaky son of a gun about the very same thing when he came to me with his plan. He explained it like this. Ernest was done with showbiz, and even more done with Clarinda in showbiz. He wanted her to settle down, start squeezing out some pups, which at her age would have been ambitious at best. But as far as she was concerned, she was gonna die up there on that stage. Whether it was singing or spinning a roulette wheel or asking folks how many times a night they make whoopee or whatever. So, he came to me with a bottle of her favorite cocktail with that damn memo about Clarinda's contract. He said there was no way she would take a drink in front of him, but that she would never back down from anything she saw as a challenge from me. That last part I knew from experience to be true. But now, having been informed of this unfortunate business of her drink being spiked, I think it's altogether clear what happened. That no good backstabber set me up. Ooh, this is getting different. Hmm. Did you conspire to give Clarinda alcohol? Mr. Goldwasser, according to Jack Shell, you wanted to sabotage your wife's career and sobriety so that she would come home and make babies for you. Are you... You have got some nerve, you condescending piece of trash! You have no idea how much I love my wife! You have no idea! Hey, Ernie, we got a pretty good idea how you set up Jack Shell to take the fall, so you can just reel in the indignation, okay? Admit it. You killed your wife. I set Jack Shell up? 
Try the other way around, pal. Why the hell do you think I told you about him in the first place? I gave him a simple job. Give my wife some booze so that she could finally come home and have a life with me. And now she's dead! I don't want to lawyer up, I really don't. But if you don't stop pointing the finger at me and start getting about the business of finding out how Jack killed my wife, I'll have no choice! Mr. Goldwasser, it's not my place to advise you, but if you are truly both innocent and interested in finding your wife's killer, then we are your best hope. I... damn it. Just keep looking, okay? Please. The only other suspect is the is uh, Buddy. There's something missing in Jack Shell's dressing room. They're both in there, so there's something else I'm missing. Aha! This looks exactly like the sweater he has on now. In fact, all of these sweaters look the same. I wonder how he knows which one is the lucky one. Location searched. Don't worry. A cold virus generally only lives for five or six hours on a contaminated surface. That said, it couldn't hurt to wash up and get a new set of gloves. Hmm. I got a feeling I know who did it. It's probably him. This should get us a warrant. Search Buddy's room. DNA evidence. Let's find out for sure. This one. I got the funny feeling. Yeah. I had a feeling I had uh, Steve's DNA on hand somewhere. Two greens. There, and there, and here. Confirm match. I think we have a few more questions for bachelor number one. See, told you. And with Buddy not there, we can search his room. What do you need? Need a search warrant for Steve Thompson's room? What evidence do we have? That's the one. Since the DNA from Jack Shell's sweater corroborates his testimony, there shouldn't be any problem getting a warrant to search Thompson's room for evidence linking him to the murder of Clorinda Jackson. Good. Let's stick to it then. Is there a problem, officer? Mr. Tamson, this is a warrant to search your room and possessions. If you wouldn't mind stepping outside, please. If I didn't know better, I'd think this was just another ordinary hotel room. Oh? What we have here? Same color as the thread we found on the victim's phone. I agree. We'll want to take a closer look at that. Ah, 
This is where the hotel room illusion ends. Hmm. Aha! These look like divorce papers from Ernest Goldwasser and Clorinda Jackson. The names are handwritten over what appears to be some sort of correctional fluid. And those dates are over eight years ago. I don't think I'd try to pass these off as real, but I don't think that's the point. Oh, good. Now let's finish this off by talking to... Talking to you. Are these your divorce? Hey, look, I was just... I wanted to replace something ugly from my past with something a little more hopeful, that's all. Did Clorinda see these? Uh-uh. No. Those are all about my private hopes. We had a good thing. We have DNA. How is that possible? Do you remember passing Jack's shell in the way to the hot tub? You should really cover your mouth when you sneeze. You could spread germs. And DNA. Oh my god, that was when she died? You said it was like 10 p.m. I could have sworn I went out much earlier than that. But, you know, I didn't look at the clock, so I guess it could have been that late. I'm really sorry. That guy was Jack Shell? Is there anything else you want to tell us? Oh, we'll find out in a minute. For now, I'm heading back to the lab. Because I need to process, uh... Compare notes. Well, compare fibers. I have anything in here? Yes, I do. The light can't get through the correctional fluid. We'll have to figure out some way to remove it. Wait, I have an idea. If we look at it from the back, we should be able to highlight the impressions the typewriter or pen made on the paper. I hope you can read backwards. Yes, I can. But first, let's have a a peek. A comparative notes. Where'd it go? Where is it? Where is it? Seriously, where's the thread gone? Oh, there it is. The thread on the phone came from that towel. Excellent. Steve Tamson covered the names on his own divorce papers with correctional fluid, then wrote Ernest and Clarinda's name on top. Maybe we have a revenge motive. Hmm. We still got nothing on the ring. <clears throat> Unless...
see tiny imperfections along the edges of all the decoration on this ring. Perhaps it was handmade. I can see tiny imperfections along the edges of all the decoration on this ring. Is there seriously nothing on this? Strange. Huh. <clears throat> anyway, let's get that warrant from Brass. Yeah? Uh, <clears throat> we need to bring Steve Thompson in. I'll see what I can do. Show me the evidence. Divorce paper. Problem here is I don't see how these things are connected. Do you have enough evidence? How about a thread found in the victim's phone? How's that? Casual contact might not be so casual if there's a possible motive. I think I can sell it. Good. Before I do, I'm gonna find out my mail. <sighs> we found thread from your towel on you Corona's phone. Me in here for a thread. If my girlfriend wants to clean off her phone with my towel, what do I care? Your, diver your divorce papers look a lot like motive. Hey, those were fantasy. Wouldn't you want your girlfriend to divorce her husband? I had a good thing going with Clorinda. I'm the last person that wanted her dead. I'd like to talk to Ernie Goldwasser. I'll bring him right up to interrogation. Uh, why is your name on Steve Tampson's divorce papers? Divorce papers? What, what are you talking about? And you keep bringing up Steve Tampson. Who the hell is this guy? Steve is the gentleman your wife was sleeping Son with. Son of a bitch! Oh, damn it! Can you think of any reason why this person might want revenge on you or Clorinda? <sighs> the show. You said divorce papers and... I mean, we, we catch spouses in their lies on national television. It has to be the damn show! You know, there was a guy. I, I think his name might just have been Steve, right at the beginning. Th that, that guy was off his nut. He told us in an interview that he had been with somebody other than his wife. Then he freaked out when we used it in the show. I mean, it was right there in the contract. All interviews are taped, and we have the right to show any of it on the air. He acted like we'd broken confessional or something, but it's not like we ever heard from him again. Is there any way we can verify that Steve was on the show? Yeah, I have a picture from that episode somewhere on our network. I'll send it from my phone. Thank you, sir. Okay, you should have it now. Corona Jackson in rumors. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know what to do. 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 Microscope. Evidence. I thought so. And a ring.
That ring on his finger looks exactly like the one we pulled out of the hot tub. The pattern of bruising on the victim matches the ring that Steve Tampson wore on Rumors. Let's go talk to Jim. All right. Jim. Hey. You got it. Is this your ring? I wish. Would you try it on for us? On your left ring finger, please. Like a wedding ring, huh? Sure, I'll try it on. It's a little big for me. I've always had skinny fingers. Look, it's a nice ring, but it ain't mine. You lying sack of shit. Look, I don't know what's up with that picture, but that's not my ring. We looked at that picture up close. It appears to be an authentic screen capture from the first episode of Rumors. Ernest Goldwasser gave it to us. Did Ernie actually remember me? I'm shocked. Yeah, I was on that show. I was kind of an idiot to talk about cheating on my wife in an interview for a TV show, but they didn't have to put it on the air. It's not like we went all the way. We just made out. I, I would have told her. But they didn't have to ruin my life. Then Clorinda checked into the same rehab clinic as me. I mean, what are the odds, right? Did she recognize you? She did, totally. Had the nerve to act like it was no big deal, like we were old friends or something. She had no idea. So I gotta say, I really did get a kick out of wrecking their marriage. And getting laid for the trouble. How you like your little coward now, Ernie? So you got your revenge, but it wasn't enough. You needed her dead just to get right with the world. You slipped some roofies into her drink. Maybe gave her a little back rub. When she started to go under, you made sure that she didn't come back up. Hey, whoa, I didn't kill her. I got what I wanted. Why would I risk it? Why did you call yourself a you little coward? How you like your little coward now? That's an odd turn of phrase. I... he called me that on the show. Bitch. I'll kill you and the little coward you're screwing. A call was made to check that voicemail at 1015. It was in Clorinda's purse, and there are no prints on it. Strange for a shiny phone like that. Mm. You said you were alone in your room, at least after you saw Jack. If that's true, Clorinda couldn't have wiped the phone down with your towel, and you never did explain the ring. I think you're an excellent liar, Stephen. But eventually, the details fail to connect, even for the best. We all heard you say... Little coward. We've got it on tape. Do you really want all this to go to a jury? If you're going to take a fall, don't you want everyone to know your side of it? My side? Yeah, I'll tell you my side. I had the roofies from before rehab. I was going to get rid of them, but then Clorinda showed up. I thought I could use them to get her into bed, but turned out I didn't even need them. She wanted it. But then last night she pushed me, and I knew I had to end it. Then that idiot showed up with the booze, and I saw my chance. I slipped her the mickey, and went back to my room to get my wedding ring. It didn't fit anymore. Why did you need the ring? I had to show her. I had to show her the love that she had cost me. You think I gave her a back rub, Captain? I shoved that bitch under as hard as I could. I left my ring with her, because I finally didn't need it anymore. And the phone call! The message! I couldn't resist checking what Ernie had to say. I'll tell you, I laughed my ass off. Stephen Tampson, you're under arrest for the murder of Clorinda Jackson. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. Well, Steve, well now! No more rehab for you. But they tell me prison has a sobering effect on people. It's you! I should have known all along. Ernie, calm down. I'll be with you in a second. You're that total nut job from the pilot of rumors! Do you know what your wife said that made me drown her? She told me she loved me. I'll kill you, you son of a bitch! Whoa! Who help here? I'll kill you! I see they got the bloodstains cleaned up. Nothing like showing up to your murder trial with a broken nose. Anyway, good job on this case. It was tricky. Steve Tampson had an answer for everything. Except the evidence. 
Yeah. Yay! Yay! I did it! I wasn't very thorough on that one, though. <laughs> anyway. Thank you all so much for joining the experience. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button to raise hell. Subscribe some more, and I'll see you in the next video. So long.